right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this week's Throwdown Thursday session. Um, Carlos Casada is going to go over common insects in the garden. So um, I'm going to let him take it away and be sure to stay tuned to, to fill out the survey at the end of this session so you can gain 10 points for your county. Thank you for uh, that introduction. Uh, the easiest way to separate insects from uh, other animals is by counting their legs. Insects are the only animals in the planet that have six legs during their uh, adult stage. Um, another characteristic of insects is that they have uh, their body divided into three parts. They are head, thorax, and abdomen. And the last characteristic of insects is that they usually have two pairs of wings. And the reason I say usually is because um, insects such as bed bugs, they don't have wings, or insects uh, such as how flies only have one pair of, uh, of wings. But there are about 91,000 species of insects in the United States. And it has been estimated that at any point of time, we have at least a, a, a thousand insects in our backyard. And you can think about, okay, in the winter, how is that possible? Well, if you dig uh, your backyard, you will find a lot of eggs and uh, larva or nymph of insects that are overwintered there, uh, overwintering there. So, of those 91,000 um, species of insects, 97% of them are beneficial or harmless. And they can give us a very important ecological service such as pollinizations, as you can see on this picture over here is a moth. And then also they are part of the food chain of uh, birds uh, and fish, or they can also help us to decompose uh, plant material. So in this picture right here, we have teramites. Uh, teramites are one of the most important insects in uh, the forest. Um, obviously, if they are in our houses, they are uh, a very important pest as well. But Insects also help us to decompose animals. So in this picture right here, uh, we see uh, these uh, flies and the black uh, thing that you can see over here. This is a beetle feeding on these uh, dead animals. And actually uh, researchers use uh, the biology of these insects or the life cycle of these insect present on these animals to determine for how long they had, uh, those animals have been dead. Insects are also uh, help us to reduce pests in, in our crops. And those are some of the insects that we will see uh, uh, today. So insects, these ones right here uh, is an uh, striped pine cucumber beetle, a striped cucumber beetle on your left and a spotted cucumber beetle on your right. They both only attack cucumber plants. That being said, if you find these insects on your tomatoes or on your uh, cabbage, they will not feed on those, although they might be present over, over there. And that's one of the important things or identifying insects. These cucumber beetles they feed on the leaves, they feed on, on the flowers, they even feed on the fruits. Uh, fruit like this, you can still eat them, but it will be very hard to sell them. Um, something that these insects are very important is because they can also transmit diseases. So in this picture right here, we have a uh, uh, bacteria will in a pumpkin, and once that plants get a disease, there is nothing that we can do to save it. Other insects like squash bugs are also uh, specialized on cucurper plants, meaning that they only feed on cucurper plants. And, but they look like other uh, insects that might be beneficial. Like for example, here, these two uh, species of insects right here, they're called assessing bug and they will feed on uh, insects. Uh, in this case, we can see that these uh, 
uh, this assessing bug is feeding on a Hornet uh, wasp over, over there. But the squash box also looks like the leaf-footed uh, bug, which here in West Virginia, they're not a big deal. They don't cause a lot of damage. However, they might be a uh, problematic pest on down in, in the south in Florida, uh, feeding on um, oranges. But here they're not uh, 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 they're not a big problem. Then we have insects like aphids. Basically, whatever crop you plant, you will find a species of aphids feeding on it. As you can see right here, aphids can change of size, uh, color, and that is because there are different species that will feed on different crops. And the first sign to know if you have aphids is to see a honeydew on your plants. Honeydew is a, a, a liquid uh, that is half a lot of sugar and that is excreted by these uh, by aphids and, and other hemipterans as well. So an example of other hemipterans that um, that produce honeydew are white flies. White flies is another insect that is very common in our gardener, in our gardens. And um, however, here in West Virginia, uh, there are they are more problematic when uh, uh, when they are in the greenhouse or or high tuna. Then another uh, very common insect that we have here is a brown memory steam bug. This is actually an invasive species and that usually they go inside our houses uh, in the fall. However, they are also important for our, uh, in our crops. They can uh, feed on beans, they can feed on sweet uh, corn. They are very important pests on apples and also uh, tomatoes. Another common insect is Colorado potato beetle. They are uh, one of the most important pests on potatoes, but they can also feed on other solanation uh, plants such as uh, tomatoes. Then we have flea beetles. These are very common in our gardeners, uh, in our gardens, and they can feed on broccoli, cabbage, tomatoes, uh, potatoes, and they're called flea because flea beetles because they jump. And there are uh, sometimes we see their damage first before see them because they're very small, and the damage is those very small run, random um, uh, holes on, on the leaves. Very common is a Japanese beetles. Um, and this one on your right is a green June beetle. And uh, they usually feed on a lot of different plants, but Japanese beetles will love your roses. So if you have roses on your garden, uh, keep your eye on this beetle between middle of June to August, because um, if they find them, they will they will come and, and defoliate uh, your, uh, your uh, roses. Then we have a lot of butterflies and moth uh, uh, around, and they are not a problem during the adult stage. However, during the larvae stage, they are really good uh, uh, leaf uh, feeders. So here we have several species, uh, but some of them will also go after uh, the fruit. I already mentioned some of the beneficial insects that we can find in our gardens, but I will I will say that hoverflies are very common uh, in our gardens. A lot of people confuse them with um, with bees because of, of the color, but these are actually flies, and you can distinguish by the eyes, and they only have one pair. Of uh, of winds, they usually, if you are outside and you're sweating, they will go and try to suck the sweat uh, from your legs, and people uh, feel that they're biting, but they cannot bite, they cannot sting, and they are very important predators during the larvae stage of aphids. Then we have lace winds, another important uh, predators that are very common in our gardens. Uh, you can actually buy them and release them on your garden, but naturally they will be there and uh, they uh, feed on aphids during the larvae stage, during the adult stage, they are attracted to light. 
light. So it will be very common for you to find them in your windows uh, and 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 door if you have uh, if you have lights uh, over there. So uh, lady beetles are very common in our gardeners too. They're good insects. They feed on aphids, white flies, spider mites, and many others. In this picture right here, I put on purpose an Asian uh, lady beetle, which will go inside your houses and some people dislike them uh, because of that. We have other lady beetles like these that are called Mexican meat beetles that will feed on our beans. However, there are many different species of lady beetles that are beneficial to us. And then we have insects like these Parasit, a parasitic wasp over here. They're very, very small. They're very common in our garden, but we cannot see them because they're very, very small. So just in the last 10 minutes, I have mentioned about 20 different insects uh, that we have in, in, our, in our garden. Um, that being said, it's very difficult to uh, know all that insects that we have in our gardeners, however, in our gardens. However, we should focus on learning what are the insects that are key pests on the plants that we are growing. So uh, that being said, I would just encourage you to go uh, to, to internet and just Google what are the most common pests on, I don't know, peppers tomatoes or whatever you're planting. My recommendation will, see, will be to go in the, the website and just write Mill Atlantic Commercial Vegetable Production uh, Recommendations. And the first uh, link that you will have is something from uh, New Jersey. I will just click over there and I will download the PDF. You will have something like this on the first page. In the second page, you will notice that uh, we, as a West Virginia University, uh, uh, put our inputs into these uh, publications and we update it every other year. And it is a big publication, so you will have really good information about all the different vegetables that we have here in West Virginia. Uh, this is an example of the tomato page. Is giving you all the different varieties of tomatoes, uh, what is that uh, soil requirement, nutrition, uh, fertilization. But what I want to get into is they also give you information about insect control. And you can use this list of insects to know what are the most important pests on the crop that you are growing. So in this case, we have these few insects in that uh, in that publications. That means that those are the most uh, insect that the uh, the most common problematic insects on tomatoes. So with that, um, I will uh, open uh, to any questions. I'm not seeing any questions yet in the chat, but just so everyone knows, I did put the link to the survey there as well. Um, if you want to go ahead and take that while um, Carlos is answering questions and the code word is insects. Um, but yeah, feel free to put any questions in the chat or just speak up if you have any questions about insects for Carlos. have a quiet group today compared to sometimes there sometimes we get questions sometimes we don't it just depends um but I really appreciated this Carlos this was a fantastic presentation and I know I definitely learned a lot about pests in my garden I um was new to gardening last year and had a lot of issues um okay here Baxter says what do you use as your first choice organic pesticide Yes, that's a good question. We will actually have uh, another presentation about that topic, um, but it will depend on the insects that you're controlling. Like for example, I like to recommend a lot of uh, BT, which is Bacillus thuringiensis, but BT only works for 
uh, lepidopterans for caterpillar uh, problems. Um, they will not kill anything related to dipterans, for example. So another good choice may be oils, uh, insecticidal or horticultural oils or insecticidal soaps, uh, but they you have to know how to use them because if you put more what the label recommend you, you can kill the plant or if it is too hot, you can also kill the plants. But I will say those three. Um, for growers, I recommend a product that is called Bauberia basiana. Uh, it is a fungus, but I don't think it is a sole for uh, for home for homeowners. So I think it's only sold for for for, for farmers. Okay, and Mary um, says Japanese beetles seem to like grapes, and also she wants to know what would be the black beetle with red stripes. Uh, well, like I say, Japanese beetles, yes, uh, they like grapes, and they like many other plants. So I have seen them on like maples, apples, oaks, so many different type of plants. Um, about the beetle, uh, I don't know. I mean, like there are more than 20,000 species of beetles here in West Virginia. So I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I, I wouldn't be able to answer the questions. If you can send me a picture, I, I will try to do it, but. But uh, yeah, if you like, want, Mary, if you want to send a um, picture to the Facebook group, I can send it to. Carlos, and maybe he can help you a little better with that. Um, someone else says, Lee says, we have issues with asparagus beetles. Do you have any suggestions for those? Well, uh, not right now. I don't have experience with asparagus beetles, but I will be happy to find information and send it to you. Perfect. And then someone else, uh, Donna, suggested maybe um, maybe the beetle that Mary had a question about could be a box elder beetle. Um, so I think that's just a suggestion. Um, yeah, well, the box seller, um, yeah, it is a, it is not a beetle, it's a hemipteran, but um, usually, it's not usually, they only feed on one type of maple they're not going to be problematic on your house or any of, of, of the other plants. But I I don't know if it is the ones that, that, that she's talking about. And then Billy says, um, I use a lot of cinnamon on my house plants. Would it deter caterpillars and others? And then he also says he has something chewing into his zucchini stems at the soil level. In the zucchini, and it is coating the entire plant. It might be, it might be a co a type of co worm. Okay. Um, I don't know if cinnamon will work. I mean, it, it have a strong smell, so I would think that it might it, it, it might um repel some type of insects. But I I haven't read about if it will um if it will de deter uh, caterpillars. Uh, for caterpillars, like I say, I will use Bt, Bacillus thuringiensis is, is, a, is a bacteria. You can find it in basically anywhere that sell uh, uh, pesticide products, but it's, a, it's actually a biological control. So I would recommend that. Okay. And then um, he said like a mosquito bit. Um, like a mosquito. What What do you mean? Um, Billy, do you have a little more information on that on the mosquito? Yeah, like I say, pictures are great whenever you have questions, and 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 if you if you uh want to uh I can type my email so you can send me questions directly to me or or to you, um. I see a recommendation over there about beneficial insects in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, beneficial insects, such as predators and parasitoids, uh, feed on pollen, just like 
pollinators. So by planting uh, flowers uh, near to your crops, that way you will try, you will keep your uh, beneficial insects uh, in, in that place so that they don't go to a different, uh, to, to, to another place for, for other food. Control mosquitoes. Um, well, uh, you can control mosquitoes uh, with, uh, with products in the adult stage, but that's not efficient. Uh, the best way to control mosquitoes is to control them in the water or to avoid water, okay? Uh, because you can try to control mosquitoes in the adult stage um, and you will kill a lot of them, but the next day, all that are reproducing and developing on the water on, on the following week, they will come up from the water and there will be nothing to, to stop them. So the best way to control mosquitoes is by avoiding uh, uh, water that is not, obviously that is not moving and to control the mosquitoes in that level during the larva stage. That's the best way to control mosquitoes. And then Mary wants to know, is BTS specific for beans or other crops? No, BT, uh, you can you can basically uh, apply BT in all, all, all vegetable crops that I know. Uh, but obviously, uh, there are different formulations, so you need to read a label. And in the label of the products will tell you where can you apply these products. You cannot apply these products if the site, in this case, will be the crop is not in the label. But BT is very safe. We actually, uh, BT is actually used to control uh, black flies on rivers because we know that BT is very safe for mammals and uh, many other uh, fish and many other type of animals, yeah. Are there any more questions? Um, as always, you guys, I will be um, sharing a recording of this um, so you can go back and watch it later. And then we will also have the survey link available at that time as well in case you miss it or if anyone is watching this recording back. Um, we always include that survey link in the description of the video and on, in our Facebook caption. So um, just letting you guys know for that. But otherwise, we really appreciate this, Carlos. This was very informative um, and we definitely learned a lot about insects today. So thank you to everyone for joining.